Welcome into Lion Pride Sports. I'm Andrew Rogers. Joining me for the final time, although not sad, but about a happy time, is one more time Coach Stuger. Coach, thanks for joining us. Well, it's good to be back again. You know, I'm probably going to miss it. I'm going to miss seeing you here well, for these uh, interviews. About, yeah, absolutely. I know uh, we were just talking a little bit about how fast time goes and where you're headed, all those types of things. It, it does go fast. So let's talk about last week, uh, last home game of the season. It was senior day, um, and we just fell short, and I think it all started off with UCM going up by 17 at the end of the first quarter. Yeah, just a case where we just didn't get out, got out of the shoot very well. Um, you know, didn't start fast. It's a little bit something that we've talked about all year is, is getting ready to play and being ready to play from, from, uh, from the first uh, uh, kickoff. And, um, you know, we, we fight back and we clawed our way back. But, you know, it's just tough, especially against a really powerful offense like UCM, you know, to, to fall, fall behind. Uh, kind of that quickly, um, you know, it just puts you at a disadvantage. But uh, as though I'm proud of our fight and, and climbing back and having a chance at the end of the game to, uh, to tie it up. But, um, you know, it's just the, the key is starting fast, and we just didn't do that. Yeah, and 229 yards of total offense for UCM. How did, how did they even, uh, you know, accumulate that many yards in one quarter of play? Well, it's, you know, it's, I don't know. You know, we have, uh, you know, part of the – Coaching is, is psychology. I mean, it's a large part of it. And, and you know, you know we got to figure out ways to have our team a little bit more prepared to start the game fast. And, and uh, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, you, you know, it's just, I don't know, we had senior day. I don't know if, you know, all the introductions of the seniors. I know it's kind of emotional uh, at the start there when we're doing all our senior introductions and pictures with families. But, man, you got to be able to flip that switch and get it started. It just, uh, you know, they just took went down on a quick, drive and we held them to a field goal on that first drive but then we you know we don't answer we you know, we you know we have a third and short that we should be able to convert and we don't and we have to punt it right back and then they go down and take 10 nothing lead you know if we get that first down and kind of at least keep the ball a little bit um, so you know it's on both sides you know we just have to we just got to be ready to go and that's what we've kind of focused on all week this week is you know really starting fast and seeing what happens and you talked about the senior day festivities and kind of what leads up into that let's take a step back from that even for for people that don't get to see it what was the locker room presence like going into this final well, the game? locker room presence was kind of the same I mean I think we just went out a lot earlier and, and uh, you know, um, and, and lined up and did our, our senior uh, introductions and, and acknowledgments. And so, you know, I think, you know, some of the, you know, the, the guys really talked uh, themselves, uh, you know, as a group, as a team, they really wanted to kind of do their own little pregame talk. And, and a lot of that was in, in going out and trying to honor and play for the seniors and, and make it about them that day. And so um, other than that, it was pretty normal. But, but of course, a lot of focus is on that uh, on that last home game for our seniors. And taking a step away from the seniors now, somebody that looked really good that week, Cade Brister, 312 passing yards, three touchdowns, 100 rush yards, also rushed a touchdown. For all of those people that have had doubt about Cade over the season, you know, a young quarterback uh, with, with a little bit of, uh, you know, needing of development toward his accuracy, uh, how, how did he basically shut down that doubt this week? Well, you know, Cade just makes a lot of plays that, you know, uh, you know, looks like a play's dead or if he's, you know, caught in the pocket, he's able to, you know, so many times he can escape and go make some first downs. And, you know, he just, you know, he just wills himself to get out of stuff and make, it's just the competitor that he is, you know. Um, you know, I've had a few freshman quarterbacks in my career, you know, that you've kind of, uh, you've, you know, that you've went through the season with. And, uh, you know, most of them, you know, Cade's really kind of looked a lot more like a veteran through a lot of the year. Yeah, he makes, he makes some freshman mistakes. I mean, you know, that's just part of the, the development part of it. But, you know, he's one of the first freshmen I've ever really had um, in my career that just really uh, is composed back there like a veteran. And so um, he's kept us in a lot of games, you know, and, and uh, you know, and and uh, I'm really excited about his future here. Just um, like I said, and even even like you said, he's got some areas to improve accuracy a little bit. Yet still on the year, he's you know he's pushing 67, 68 percent completion rate. I mean, a percentage. So, you know that you know I'm I'm excited because uh, that's where the bar is right now. As he does develop, uh, I think. Uh, uh, there's no ceiling on what he's going to do. And then you talked about a little bit about defense to start the show. Uh, kind of uh, dive into that a little bit more for me. You know, in the second quarter, some key turnovers really helped the Lions battle back into the game. And uh, they ended up winning that quarter 14-7 to going into halftime. Still down, yes, 24-14. to But uh, what, what were those key turnovers?
turnovers as, as boosters for not just the defense but the offense as well. Well, you know, the key the thing about it is though we didn't we didn't we didn't take advantage of uh, some of those turnovers and and um, you know it got us uh, it got a defensive stop but we weren't able to, to just go convert and make those into points. You know, and and those are like I said those are the opportunities that you really have to uh, take advantage of and um, you know. You know, like I said, you know, we, we, we've struggled a lot this year. Um, it will be a focal point of this offseason is just really stressing uh, getting off the field on third down defensively. I think as we look back and as I do our whole analysis of our whole season, I don't think we're going to be real excited about our third downs and, and, and not getting off the field in a lot of situations on third and uh, past medium or even third and long. Um, you got you got to get off the field and and um, and then on offense you got to can take advantage of those uh, turnovers. That's what turnovers are: is you get a bonus possession and you got to go take advantage of it. And so, um, you know, a bunch of positives this year. But you know, we we see a list of things that you know through spring football and everything is going to be a big focal point for us to get better at. And now let's move into uh, the the coming week. Uh, I want to talk about practice here, and uh, I don't want to you know harp on last week more than anything else. But uh, going into this week for the final game of the. Season, and what has practice been like? Well, you would think, um, you know, it, it, it's been some tough losses here, and you would think that, uh, you know, uh, I've always heard. I, I, this is kind of new for me a little bit. I mean, this is, you know, um, in my career, I, I haven't, you know, I've had two losing seasons in my career, and so you never know how to respond when kids are, are, are struggling. Um, and I've been really impressed with this football team this year. I know last year, um, you know, taking over a new team and, and kind of trying to get things turned around, we didn't handle some of that adversity very well. You know, we were, I don't think everybody was coming to practice with the attitude to even try to t keep fighting and everything as a whole. Um, a lot of guys did, but we had a number of guys that didn't. This year I'm seeing, you know, uh, you know, this week of practice has been outstanding. And, and, you know, they have a lot to play for, and that's what they're looking at. You know, it's just kind of ending the year on a positive note and, and beating a team that beat us last year on the road. Um, so a lot of positive, and so I'm. That's what I'm really proud of is the maturity of this team and the leadership of this team and how they've really stayed bought in and they haven't. Uh, nothing's got negative, and they're they're still fighting and and, and that's what uh, you know, that's what I'm proud of. They they recognize how close they are to being, you know, a six seven win team this year in some of the games that slipped away. So their, their, their practice has been great. And I know, I, and I love how you use the word impressed because I don't think you're just impressed. I think a lot of people are impressed because coming back from last year to this year, there was a lot more expectations to, to win and succeed, especially from a fan's perspective, mm -hmm. just seeing how the teams come together and, and just shaped up. Um, and, and now when we go and use that term of impressed, uh, there's been three games this season where the Lions have just fallen short by 10 points or less. Two of them have been three-point games. You know, instead of seeing a record of three and seven, you see a record of six and four. So it's, right. it's an incredible, d d vast difference. So uh, in regards to finishing games, how is that going to be um, something that is worked more on in the offseason going into next year? Well, I think, you know, we always, we always evaluate what our, what our issues were during the season. And, and, you know, and then that's really what we build our, our spring football around of what we're emphasizing you know right now we're just not we're, you know our first quarters and, and you know at the end of the second quarter at the end of halves we've been outscored in the, in the second half of, of the end of the first half and the end of the second half um, you know we haven't won those inside those four minute situations um, in other words we're just not finishing halves we're not finishing games we have to identify what that is um, <clears throat> you know and and you know, is it we start pressing and we don't want to make a mistake, we start playing on our heels. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that you're seeing right now that we, we have identified how close we are, but it's the little things. It's one of our pillars in our program. It's, it's, it's some of these little things that have really kind of hurt us um, and, and, and lost some football games. Those are things that we will really focus on in the offseason. And, um, you know, but, you know, the other thing, too, I think what's, what's hard is as, as a coaching staff, and when we came into Lindenwood a year ago, um, and kind of assessed, you know, the plans and, and the, to set out a direction to get this program to the top. Um, it's, it's an investment, and, and we knew that there was going to be some, um, there was going to be some uh, uh, rough roads, and there was going to be a little bit of adversity, and there was, it was going to take a little bit of time. Um, and so, you know, I, I feel bad for this year's seniors because I really think that we, we felt like we could be six-win, seven-win team. 
Um, <clears throat> we're not concerned about where this program is going a year from now, but you know, because we're still focused on finishing here. So, you know, our off season is going to be very. Uh, uh, it's 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 always tough, but we're going to really focus on mental toughness and being able to start fast and and being able to close out. And you got to build those situations in practice and in, and in the in the winter workouts uh, to create some of that adversity and how you finish through those things. So. So we'll, we'll keep plugging away at that. And then going back to the seniors now as you brought them back up, um, and I know you're an old school coach, but I've heard through the grapevine that the seniors are going to have the opportunity to give their best touchdown celebration dance at the end of practice. That's right. Tonight, you know, the day after practice, you know, it's, um, um, you know, I, like I said, I'm, I, don't like, uh, I don't like celebration penalties, and that's a big no-no if you get a penalty for excess celebration so you know that's why tonight that is their opportunity to shine after practice and and uh, I'm sure they'll, it'll be filmed and we'll kind of take a vote on what's the best uh, best end zone dance uh, out there and who do you think's going to have the best end zone Man, dance? I don't know that's a tough one you know I've been joking I said uh, I can tell you who it won't be and that's John Harris you know he, he just he's just one of those guys that he doesn't like to celebrate uh, and get too exuberant so maybe he'll surprise me but uh, uh, he's one of the guys that'll still throw the ball back to the referee but uh, I don't know. That's going to be a tough call. I, there, there's four or five of them that could be pretty creative. I've heard Mason Bendigo has put a little thought into his, so maybe maybe that's uh, maybe I'd put it on that. And speaking of Mason, yeah, I was in contact with him a little bit, and uh, he told me that Michael Crowder's got some moves. Well, see, Michael's can dance. Well, that'll be interesting. It, it's it depends on if it's just the dance or if it's uh, how creative it is. So uh, Michael is a good dancer. That that could be a good one too. And then uh, just, just finally, you know, as we go into Missouri Western, what has the preparation been like? Well, um, <clears throat> all we've talked about, it's been a recurring theme today, is just is starting fast. I mean, we've, we feel like we've had the schemes, we've had uh, the plays, we've, we've had, uh, we have to chip away at a couple things. And we've challenged them this week to just start fast in this game, try to, you know, take the lead. Uh, be the ones that get out fast first and, and kind of see where it goes. You may like the results. So, you know, um, you know they're, they're a team that we feel like we can beat. And I think each week we feel like the teams we've played we can beat. It's just a matter of um, being on the road and being able to walk out of a locker room and, and, and kind of uh, attack first and, and kind of see where it goes. So that's, that's what our focal point's been all week. Um, is uh, we feel like we can move the ball offensively and, and we, can, uh, we can take advantage of some things there. And, and defensively, I think we can contain that as well. We just got to start fast. Well, Coach, good luck to you and your team this weekend Thanks, against Andrew. Missouri Western. Appreciate That'll it. do it for Coach Stugard. When we come back, we'll be joined by the Linwood women's ice hockey coach, Coach Scott Spencer. He's next on Lion Pride Sports. I want to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I need to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Why can't I eat, eat, eat apples and bananas? Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. Take a look under your bed. Find stuff under there? What about jobs? No? Now try your closet. Still no jobs? Just more stuff? Well, you really have both. See, stuff is defined as household articles considered as a group. Sometimes this stuff is no longer needed. Wait, no longer needed? I can't be right. Because remember those jobs you were looking for? Those are really needed. And they're the stuff inside your stuff. Our job is to unlock those jobs. And it starts when you donate your stuff to your local Goodwill. Here's how we do it. When you donate to Goodwill, we sell your stuff to provide job training for people right here in your community. So just by teaming up with Goodwill, you help create jobs. And isn't that worth parting with the leftover guitar from your 80s cover band? Goodwill. Donate stuff, create jobs. Look at you. You're at the top of your game. You're unstoppable. Nothing can throw you off track. Wait, is that your car? Uh-oh. Yeah, I saw that coming. That will throw you off track. You're looking at around 10 grand in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Let's try this again. Smart move. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. 
Welcome back to Lion Pride Sports, now being joined as promised by the Linwood Women's Ice Hockey Coach, Coach Scott Spencer. Coach, thank you so much for taking some time and joining us. Thanks for having me again. And Coach, you know, we haven't gotten to speak ever since, you know, the first game of the season. Uh, it was against Wisconsin, yeah. uh, the re number two ranked team in the nation, and uh, we fell short in those two games. Yeah, they're actually, uh, they've only lost once and are now the, the number one team in the country, as kind of predicted. But uh, yeah, we played well that first weekend. Uh, lost 3-2 the first night um, and had our chances to, to win in, in the third period. We had a couple good looks there on the power play in the third period, but just came up a little bit short um, and then, then couldn't get it done the second night. But uh, since then, we've, we've gotten better every day and, and uh, you know, we're, we're plugging along here. We're into the third of the way into the season and, and uh, I like the, the way our, our team's shaping up so far. Yeah, and the structure I kind of want to follow here for this interview, I just want to go back and, and look at all the games, uh, kind of what, uh, what we did, what we did wrong, what we could improve on, and then I want to get into a little bit about this week and, and some of the players and stuff like that. So for one, one more question about Wisconsin, how tough of an opponent were they? Honestly, this is my, what's this, my, my 13th year coaching Division One hockey on the women's side, and, and we've played Wisconsin pretty much every year at every program that I've been at. Um, this is likely their best team that I've ever ever seen out of them. They have national team kids on their fourth line, and uh, the goaltending is is maybe where they'd be a little bit susceptible to to some things. But you know, it's 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 a wave of four lines and, and three pairs of D coming at you every every shift. So they're a, they're they're a tough opponent. But again, anything in a in a one game situation, that's one of the beauty things about college athletics. It's not a best of seven. It's a a one game and done. Once you get into the tournament, and anything can happen in those games. Yeah, but it's whoever shows up ready to go, huh? Yeah, get a good goaltender and a couple bounces your way, and, and that's how upsets happen. And that's how you get the W. Now yeah. moving on to uh, Union College. Uh, that's where we got our first win of the season. Um, how, how exciting was that for the for the? Well, it, was, it was good to get that, that first one out of the way, you know, especially being on the road the first two weekends uh, going into Union. Um, they're, uh, they have a program that's been around a while, and we won 4-1 that first night. And... Uh, didn't get get a, a few bounces our, our way the second night. We were up late in the third period and and uh, did a good job. They they went ahead on a power play goal that uh, that we reviewed and and I thought was still kicked in even after the review. But they they counted it and um, then they got a power play goal after that. And then we we thought we had tied it up with about four seconds left and. Uh, I had gone off both pipes and across the goal line and, and back out, so it never went in. But um, those those were two games that we should, I felt we should have we should have come away with a sweep, but but we didn't. But we were good on Friday, and that's kind of been our theme through through all the weekends. We've been pretty good on Friday, but haven't been br able to bring it uh, the the second night in a row. So can we reschedule the schedule then and make everything Friday games? Is that okay? Go Friday and Sunday. Yeah, yeah. Did just those two. We're yeah. good. Yeah, then we'll get that day rest and. We'll, we'll go from there. And you talked about, you know, just, just a little bit before how, you know, you, especially going through the playoffs, it all comes down to that lucky bounce, and uh, it just wasn't there against Union. Of course, you no. said the double post and on the yeah. line. Yeah, no, there was, I think it was four seconds left in the, in the, or no, there was, sorry, 40 seconds left, and then there was no whistle after that, so play ran out. But, uh, and we'd used our challenge earlier in the game, so I didn't have to, to challenge it, but we'd want to face off clean and, and Gerard teed it off right off from the face off and hit both pipes and, and came out. So it was a little bit uh, one of those those days. But uh, then the next weekend we we, uh, we had Syracuse, our first home weekend, and, and played well. Um, it was probably one of the roughest games that uh, that um, I've been involved with, with the, the women's game, and got a little out of hand with that stuff, but we ended up losing in overtime. Um, up 3-1 going into the third. They battled back to go 4-3. We scored a shorthanded goal to tie it up 4-4, and then again wasn't uh, didn't wasn't our way in, in overtime and had a good chance. And then they came back down and hit a skate and had a, a tap-in goal to to win it for them. But uh, and then Robert Morris the the following weekend again we've. Robert Morris was the league champ last year, um, so a very, very strong opponent. We tied them the first night 2-2 uh, and then lost 2 nothing the second night. And then this past weekend, Mercier's the top team in the conference, was in the tournament. We beat them 4-1 the first night, then couldn't get her done on the second night. So we got to figure that side of things out uh, a little bit here as far as, as uh, 
um, how to bring it both nights and, and bring that compete and, and so on. But yeah, it's early in the year and, and uh, you know, we haven't, we haven't had a full roster yet either with injuries and stuff. So we're kind of piecing things together a little bit and a little bit short bench, but that's, that's the name of the game. So it, can't complain about it. Yeah, and you talked about Syracuse, uh, a 5-4 to four loss um, in overtime. Uh, and you're up 3-1, a, a historically good hockey program. Yeah. Uh, wh what was like, you know, the feelings like for the women out on the ice? Because in a game like that, when, you know, you're not, you're not supposed to win, you're the dog, you're kind of holding your breath at that moment. Like, oh, gosh, we, we have to be, oh, we got to do this, oh, we got to do that. And then uh, all of a sudden they score the goal and it's like, oh, shoot, and now, yeah. now we're one goal ahead. And uh, how do you, like, calm the nerves as a coach? Um, you know what, I think that's just experience. You know, with a young team, it can kind of get away from you, you know, but I like the, the resi resiliency that our, our team showed with, you know, not panicking. You know, this again, I had mentioned it before with you that we, this is the first year we've got more, more upperclassmen where we got, uh, versus the, the underclassmen where we'd had the first two years with 14, 14, 15 freshmen and sophomores. So we're, we're on the, the other side of, of the age, age line. And, and I think that really helps us because you've got some veterans in there that can kind of, we've been here before, you know, we beat them twice last year, we were 500 against them last year, so we'd, we'd split up there and split here. Uh, so we've been playing well against Syracuse over the last little while here, so there, there was no reason in our, our kids' heads that they, they didn't think they, that they could get it done. You know, and we controlled a lot of the play with that. They couldn't keep up with our tempo, and they're a, they're a big physical team, but um, we're much quicker, and, and I think that we exposed them with that on, on the Friday night. And, uh, uh, and then Saturday night, to be honest with you, it was just one of those games like, we had one goal go in where it uh, sounded like a whistle went in the crowd and it was a kid screaming so everybody stopped even their players and the kind of the kid just fired it in the open net and now it's 5-3 you know versus 4-3 so you know little things like that so that you know hopefully luck starts to, to go our way but you earn your own luck so we'll, we'll see how it goes yeah, here. Waiting to catch that yeah. break uh, you yeah. and also you uh, kind of a piggybacking off of the Syracuse game uh, how is it possible and, and, you know, correct me if I'm wrong because I don't know the, you know, the logistics that go into, you know, uh, the, the scoring and the tiebreakers and stuff like that. But how, how do you go into an overtime game against Syracuse and then officially tie against Robert Morris? Um, well, we didn't, no one scored in overtime. So, so it so doesn't yeah, go into anything else no, then, no, from that No, right after on. you go to five on five overtime. And then, then right after that, there's no shootout or anything. So you, you can, if nobody scores, it remains a tie from there. And then with the RPI, if you make it to overtime, they've changed it this year where they wait. Um, an overtime win is only 75% and an overtime loss, you still get 25% in the, in the, the um, uh, RPI ranking. So that can kind of help, you know, if you're looking at a, an at large bid later in the year, which we won't be this year, but uh, you know, but for future reference, it could, could help us down the road. Right, and you know, I, and again, we've been talking about how uh, it's been 10 games since we've seen each other, and now I kind of want to dive into some of the players. Um, who has impressed you the most, uh, and not like, you know, coming into the season, like you knew this player was going to, to have a lot of potential, but it's somebody that's on the younger side that you thought, you know, I, I know this player's got a lot of potential, but I didn't think she'd be as far developing-wise as she is already. Um, as far as our, our freshmen go, um, Taylor Kerwin is off to a, a real good start this year. Uh, she's leading all freshman scorers, I believe, in the conference as a defenseman. I think she's second in points per game as a defenseman in the nation um, for freshman for freshman D. Uh, so she's she's off to a to a good start, you know. And and we thought she'd be an impactful player, you know. But she's she she's a quick learner. She puts the time in to get better. So. Um, it's it's not surprising, but it's it's nice to see her step in and do a good job right off the bat. Um, I think Jada Burke is um, another freshman from from the Ottawa area who has who has um, been a bit of a surprise for us as far as as what she's bringing to the table. She's a big body. She takes up a lot of space. You know, she's just 
she creates things while she's out there and we didn't really know if that would be the case in her, her first year but again it all comes down to a work ethic too she puts the time in she came back or came in in, in really good shape and you know you do do the work prior and that kind of sets yourself up for success um, Sierra Burt's in a sophomore year here this year she's our leading scorer right now so she was she was on the LCHA team rookie team last year and uh, she she's not having a sophomore slump right now she's she's doing a, a very good job with uh, you know her poises. The game's just slowing down a little bit for her, which is which is nice to see. She's a heck of a playmaker, and she's creating opportunities every night. So if she could start to finish a little bit more, then uh, you know we'll be we'll be sitting pretty good. And then talking about the veterans now, as as you talked about, this is one of the heaviest veteran lineups that you've been able to work with in your career. Um, who on on the experience side and is bringing more of the leadership qualities and has exceeded in, in that realm of things? Um, you know, uh, Jolene De Bruin's been strong in, in net for us here through through the first part. She's a senior. Um, you know, just the depth of our, our of our older players, Shannon Morris Reed, Ali Larson, you know, Courtney Gansky, they all they all bring that that professionalism where they, they bring it every night, which is a good tool for, for teaching the young kids how, how they need to be a pro and and uh, they've done a, a real good job with that. Um, Taylor Gerard again got off to a good start, but we just got news we've we've lost her for the season now. So, you know she's she's our top player, so that's going to be something that we have to to, to fill and, and figure out from there. Uh, you know, so you know it's quote the New England Patriots and Bill Belichick, next person up, right? So we'll, we'll figure it out and, and go from there. And then speaking of next person up, let's, let's go into this next game, mental awareness game here at the Wentzville Ice Arena, uh, the Linwood Ice Arena in Wentzville, Missouri. Uh, you guys are facing off against St. Cloud State. What are the expectations going in? You know, I think we match up pretty good with, with St. Cloud. They're, they're another WCHA team, which they're always, they're always tough, and um, they're a big physical team. Um, hopefully our, our speed can, can, can expose them a little little bit um, but it'll be be good match up this, this weekend um, you know they they had a coaching change about the same time I want to say it was maybe the same year I took over this program so we're kind of in the both in the in the same stage of our, our programs um, changes that that were made and and they're building Eric's doing a good job there with with bringing in some good players and, and building that up so I'm excited with the matchup again get out of conference here and and try some new line combinations and, and see if we can can, can spark a, a few things. We'll we'll be starting both our goaltenders this weekend, freshman Sophie Wolf, and uh, both Joe will will play this weekend. So we'll uh, we'll see what we can come up with. And then finally, my last question for you is, uh, you know, ten games into the season, what can you improve on most? The thing that kind of sticks out to me has been, you know, the power play chances, just five of thirty three on the season. Yeah, what's that get us to? About fifteen? Yeah, fifteen percent. Yeah, you know, I'd like to, you know, a good power play is up around twenty. You know, so um, we've actually been creating pretty good looks. It's just the the finishing, and again, the consistency of of our group isn't there yet, and that kind of goes to the the Friday to Saturday night a little bit too. You know, what are what's our mental prep? What how are we preparing each each week from Friday to Saturday? You know, it's the same with the power play. You know, if you're, you've got a tap in back door, why are you finishing it, you know, this time and not next time? You know, and again, I think it's maturity. I think it's experience. Once you figure those things out between your own ears, then, then I think that'll, that'll start. But we're actually creating pretty good looks with it, so I'm pretty happy with, with how our, our power play is moving around and creating opportunities. Well, Coach, hopefully we can see some results in that category this weekend against St. Cloud State. Thank you so much Perfect. for taking some time and joining us today. Linwood fans, if you want to check out the Linwood women's ice hockey team, check them out this weekend. It's Mental Health Awareness Night. Uh, it's a jersey off the back auction, so uh, all bids, uh, as Coach told me a little bit before, start at $75 with the proceeds going to Mental Health Awareness. For Coach Scott Spencer, I'm Andrew Rogers signing off. This has been Lion Pride Sports.